So if you find a comfortable position for yourself, um, I hope I can give a guided meditation today on, and uh, as you can see, I can't sit cross-legged today, so obviously meditation has nothing to do with sitting cross-legged. We're going to be looking at the heart and knowing the heart, and I think that this is the best definition that I, my working definition is to know the heart, is knowing, uh, knowing our business, and this is the practice, this is the effort of uh, so-called meditation. The Buddha didn't use the word meditation a lot. He said bhavana, which is to grow the heart, to cultivate the heart. So we're going to cultivate a knowledge and a wisdom in the heart, and um, this is the most powerful thing. So we're not really practicing samatha or vipassana, we're not practicing concentration or insight meditation here, we're hopefully practicing wisdom meditation. And uh, this is what we're trying to grow. So I'd like you to just recall uh, a time um, that you, maybe uh, you had a, a young baby again in your hands. And uh, just a young child, a small young child that you're holding in your hands. And rather than just necessarily seeing the, sometimes I've used this as a, an image to begin with uh, compassion. If you are in any pain or any difficulty or any suffering, maybe you can just see that the baby is a little bit crying and upset and that you want to settle the baby. But sometimes we just pick up a child because it's very pleasurable to us. We're cradling the child and just the baby's been well fed and just needs to be cradled to allow it to settle down. And when we have these young children in our arms, sometimes we just rock them or cradle them. And maybe we can just sing a, a lullaby to, to the child ourself, or sometimes we're just, um, just speaking in these kind of guttural way that we speak with young babies. So we're just rocking this young child, cradling the baby, either out of trying to settle it down or just for the sheer pleasure of connecting with the beautiful, restful, peaceful child, enjoying the pleasure of a healthy child, And just cradling it in our arms, this beautiful treasure, this little life that we value very much. And we wish that that baby be at ease and at peace and free from any suffering. And of course we need to take care of ourselves, so maybe like I said, we sit down on a chair or somewhere supportive for ourselves and we can just rest and put aside all of the other duties that we've been involved with. Maybe we were rushing around, you know, but now is our time to, a little bit of time for us to take care of this baby, but also just take care of ourselves. And we can't be trying to juggle too many other things so this isn't a multitask moment. This is simply a time for us to put all of our care and attention and connection as parents, as, as caregivers to this child. So the, the kind of expression that I'm gonna to use today is, is an aspiration, it's not a, a command. So this is giving myself and this child permission to just relax, take it easy. So I'm just using the word sweet, relax, take it easy. Just as permission to myself and to this young child to just relax, to just take it easy to just enjoy this moment 
relax, sweet, take it easy, relax, sweet, easy. So similarly, I can just cradle and take some pleasure in my own body parts, so I'm just going to scan from head to toe. Again, the details don't matter too much, just a general sense of the area of the body that I'm talking about, that I'm directing this aspiration, this um, permission, this invitation, this, this welcome to my own body parts. Sweet. Relax, easy, to the top of my head. I welcome the top of my head, sweet, easy, relax. And to the back of my head, sweet, easy, relax. And to the right side of my head, sweet, easy, relax. I'm not dictating, I'm just inviting a welcoming host with this kindness to welcome these recuperative emotions and mental states, restoring the body, relax. Easy, sweet, and to the left side of my head, relax, sweet, easy, and to my forehead, sweet, easy, relax. And to my eyes, sweet, easy, relax. And to my nose, sweet, easy, relax. And to my mouth, sweet, easy, Relax. And to my neck. Sweet. Easy. Relax. And to my shoulders, my left and right shoulders. Let me just put down any shopping. Let me just really mentally make an effort to release any tension from my shoulders and arms. Relax, sweet, easy. And to my arms, sweet, easy, relax. And to my hands, fingers, sweet, easy. Relax. And to my chest and lungs. Sweet. Easy. Relax. And to my heart. Sweet. Easy. Relax. And to my back, upper back, middle back, lower back, radiating ribs, spine. Sweet, easy, relax. My pelvis and hips. Sweet, easy, 
relax. My stomach and intestines, sweet, easy, relax. So again, this is no dictating, this is just inviting and welcoming. This is the aspiration that every caregiver has for their child, that they be relax, sweet, easy. And to my thighs, relax, sweet, easy. And to my knees, relax, sweet, easy. And to my calf and chin, relax, sweet, easy. And my heel, ankle, foot and toes, relax, easy, sweet. So putting all these different body parts together, the feet, the legs, the torso, the arms, the neck and the head. And let me cradle this body and mind of mine, just as I did that young child. Just cradling it, relax, sweet, easy. And just as I wish to be at ease and at peace, calm and tranquil, equanimous with the world, so too do I wish that all people, all beings in this room be at ease, relax, easy, sweet. So radiating outwards just as ripples in a pond, just having a sense of the people around around each and every one of us here in this room. Relax, sweet, easy. I'm wishing wider and wider across the whole city of Melbourne this morning that everybody enjoy this beautiful spring morning. Enjoy their time in the sun Relax, sweet, easy. And just spreading it across the whole island, the whole continent of Australia. Relax, sweet, easy. and just spreading it outwards to our neighbors around us, Tasmania, New Zealand, Indonesia. Relax, sweet, easy. And to the whole of Southeast Asia, Philippines, across Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Burma, Lao, Cambodia. Relax, sweet, easy. And just following the sun, the golden sun over South Asia, around India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan. Relax, sweet, easy. And going further, further west through the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, 
Yemen. Relax. Sweet. <coughs> Easy. Through the Arab Peninsula, Africa, Egypt, Morocco, South Africa, the whole continent. Relax. Sweet. Easy. Moving north through Europe, through Italy to Scandinavia, Portugal to Turkey, Russia to Ireland, the whole continent of Europe. Relax. Sweet. Easy. And the whole of the Americas, South America, Central America, North America. Relax. Sweet. Easy. And the Far East, China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Mongolia, Tibet, this whole region, relax, sweet, easy. And just stepping back from this whole planet Earth, maybe we can just cradle this planet Earth like we did for that young baby, that young child. Relax, sweet, easy. And just putting down the planet Earth, we can just maybe go over to where the sun is. We can just imagine it's a, like a hammock or something very relaxing and comfortable, something that would be very safe. A couch, a conservatory, or a, a warm place in the sun. We just take comfort and care in this place. And just wish radiating outwards like the sun in all directions, that all beings in all directions enjoy the comfort of relax, sweet, easy, north, south, east, west, above and below. Just a general sense that in all directions, just as the sun is kind and generous with its golden light in all directions, relax, Sweet, easy. And as I breathe in and breathe out, I connect with myself and this whole world around me. Relax, sweet. Easy. General sense of kind regard for all beings in all directions, for self and for other. For other and for self. Relax. Sweet. Easy. Giving myself wholehearted permission to sink deeper and deeper into this beautiful, comfortable sofa or hammock or wherever I imagine this place at the center of the solar system to be. Relax. Sweet, easy. And I can just keep my attention just slightly on my breath, going in and out, knowing and feeling this connection with all beings, with self as with other, and other as with self. 
Breathing into this connection of relax, sweet, easy. Breathing into any difficulties arising. Relax, sweet. Easy. Taking great self care as well as care for others. Relax. Sweet. Easy. Becoming these words, I'm giving full permission to myself to be relaxed, sweet, easy. So whatever pleasurable feelings or sensations are arising in the body or mind, I give these care, I give these attention, I give these importance. I become a connoisseur of these pleasant feelings. A connoisseur of relax, sweet, easy, appreciative, welcoming to this mental states of relax, sweet, easy, growing my attention on these very refined qualities of the mind, of the heart giving them importance, giving them priority, putting them foremost in my mind, in my heart, sinking and immersing, allowing myself to be like that tender child, to surrender into the arms of a loving, caring mother or caregiver. So surrendering and letting go into this, the arms of this care, giving myself permission, not fighting against care and love, but opening my heart to care and love itself and enjoying it, feeling calm and peaceful and secure and protected. giving myself permission to enjoy this wonderful pleasure of the heart. Relax, sweet, easy. Enjoying these feelings in the body as if it was a beautiful concert or something wonderful, a rarefied pleasure. Relax, sweet, easy. giving great importance to care, self-care and care of others. With this great kind, 
gentle, relax, sweet, easy. If I notice any resistance or hostility in my heart, maybe I can just love it like that caregiver that I always wished that I had at hand whenever I had difficulty. Just like that firm and reassuring hand on my shoulder. Relax. Sweet. Easy. Even as a mother would care for her child, so too can I try to take care of any difficulties, any pain, any mental suffering. Relax. Sweet. Easy. any painful feelings, any difficulties arising in the heart. Just embrace it with all the love that you could ever wish for. Relax, sweet, easy. Just checking, how do I feel? How do I feel in body? How do I feel in mind? Am I experiencing like or dislike? Relax. Sweet. Easy. looking at my thoughts, just like I might look at a movie or something, my thoughts projected out there in front of my mind. Relax, sweet, easy. Looking at the underlining emotional tone of my mind the tone or the theme of my thoughts. There may be a, a tone, a flavor to them. 
relax, sweet, easy. Any sights, sounds, smells, tastes, or touches impinging on my body? Sometimes we call these dhammas, phenomena happening around me. I can just welcome them into my heart just with relax, sweet, easy. Of course, the most difficult thing can be these difficult mind states or these difficult sounds or difficult experiences that are happening, that might happen, that did happen. Just knowing whether it's the past or the future is in fact a present moment thought about the past or the future. Right now, there's just this present moment experience arising in my heart. And let me be that very kind caregiver to myself, to my own needs, to this present moment. Relax. Sweet. Easy. knowing in my heart that nothing will be perfect, but I can be that kind gear caregiver to myself in my time of need, that I can be kind and loving to my own self and radiating that outwards to all other beings. Relax, sweet, easy. knowing how I can skillfully take care of myself in my times of need, appreciating this treasure of my own skill and ability to be this caregiver to myself in my time of need, owning and taking responsibility for my own needs, being able to provide a sense of care, not demanding of others, but finding the skillful ways and means to get down to the root of my anxieties about the future or my worries about the past or any pain and difficulty that I may be experiencing in this present time being able to take care of it, relax, sweet, easy. So as I enjoy this 
space of my heart. I just inquire into its nature. What, is, what does this feeling in my heart feel like? Is this calm? Is this joyous? Is this peaceful? Is my mind scattered? Or feeling solid and stable? Is it dissipated? Or a peaceful, powerful, strong mind? What is the nature of the heart at this present moment in time? Is this calm or is it excitement? Is this agitation or is it peace? Am I at ease or dis-ease? Is this pleasure or is this pain? Is this a bright mind state or a dark mind state? Is this calm and restorative? or agitating and dissipating. What is the nature of this heart? So one of my teachers is a, a Thai monk called Ajahn Gunha, and his whole teaching is two words, sabai, sabai. So sabai is a Thai word, it's used a lot. I can't, I'm not a translator or interpreter. I've never spent much time in Thailand, but I've asked many Thai, what does it mean? And can you explain what does that mean? And what I can basically get out of it is just that means relax, sweet, easy. Any of you who have ever been involved in building projects, have you ever had contractors or builders coming into your place? And you ask them, can you do that? And they go, yeah, sweet, mate. <coughs> can you get it done? Too easy. <laughs> I'm stressed about this. Relax, don't worry. So when I first moved here to Australia, I also had to understand these uh, expressions as well. So I always find it deeply amusing that these are the words that I found very uh, helpful to help me to understand this word, sabai, sabai. So sometimes we can be a little bit uh, cheeky with ourselves with regard to our own giving ourselves permission to relax and take it easy. We're not very kind. We dictate the terms or we tell ourselves that now we should be relaxed, even though we can be going through a lot of pain and difficulty Pain and difficulty are often arising because of causes and conditions. In this past week, I had many reasons to be in pain and difficulty. And some of those reasons were physical and some of those reasons were mental. So I had many choices around how I respond to those situations that were arising. I made a decision to go for surgery and that's a serious decision in my thinking. And it takes a lot of effort and time and resources. So even the surgeon who operated on me told me that he had the same issue and he'd been putting it off himself. So we can have all of the knowledge and information in the world doesn't mean we act on it. We can know that sugar is bad for ourselves, but we still like to take it. We can know that smoking is bad for us, we still do it. 
we can have all the information in the world. We can be an expert surgeon in knee surgery and still not go for a knee operation. This is how tricky our mind is. We fail to take care of ourselves. We can have all sorts of convoluted reasons and you know, we can soldier on. A few weeks ago I was playing that um, piece about the tsunami. The Japanese expression is, you know, bear up. We can bear up. We're all trying to bear up a lot of the time. But we're not acknowledging our own fears, our own needs, our own necessities of life. We're not real to our own pain and suffering. We're not bearing witness to it. We deny our reality. We deny our difficulties. In an ignorant kind of way. So we end up trying to gratify our way out of that. So we enjoy the little dopamine boost that we get with our sugar, or our little game on the pokies, or our little thrills that we have, maybe speed off at the traffic light. Whatever it is that we do that gives us that little dopamine hit, that little pleasure reward. And these days there's a very insidious mushing going on between propaganda and marketing that's going to tell us that pleasure equals happiness. Go on, have that extra sweetie thing because this pleasure equals happiness. No, it doesn't if you're obese and you're addicted to sugar or to smoking or to other things. It will not help your happiness. It will contribute to your downfall and suffering because we're substituting dopamine for serotonin. So this morning you are enjoying the benefits of serotonin. Calm, peaceful, sweet, easy, relax. Serotonin going through your body and mind So this is happiness. What you're experiencing now is happiness. It's sustained. It's a long running dose. You've had 40 minutes of it. How long would sugar out of a donut last you? Hmm? Would you be on your second latte already? But we justify all these things and we explain it all to ourselves. We max out our credit cards. I think Australia is still highest personal debt in the world, according to some statistics. You know, we need it. We have to have it. It's a substituting pleasure for happiness. So what is pleasure and what is happiness? What are its characteristics? So pleasure is quick, short-lived, you get sick of it. One slice of the cake, very nice. Two slices, okay. Three, not so okay. Ten, you're throwing up. One ride on the Big Dipper, exciting. Two, okay. Ten, fed up of it. What happened? It's the same event, it's the same experience. Pleasure got boring. The explanation the neurobiologists give us is that dopamine loads our receptors. It loads our receptors. So we get fed up of it. The next hit has to be higher and higher and higher. And then we just fry out all of our receptors and we, we, uh, we don't get the thrill anymore. So in the end we're just trying to have higher doses of the same thing to uh, give us that same pleasure that we got initially. 
Serotonin works the opposite way. It blocks, it inhibits our uh, receptors. So you can have a load of serotonin and it doesn't do any long-term damage to you. Serotonin goes up, dopamine is down. Dopamine goes up, serotonin goes down. They're just opposite to each other. I can try to give you some of these explanations, try to describe some of the experiences that you're presently having. We could do blood tests on you, you would find that your serotonin indeed was up. Your cortisol levels were down. Your immunosystem was getting a boost because your cortisol wasn't under stress, stressing your body, so your immunosystem would be better. So you might wonder, well, what's all this got to do with how I live my life? Well, you see, this week I, I made a practice out of managing my anxiety out of dealing with a lot of physical pain, managing it, dealing with boredom because I can't move around, I can't distract myself by going here and there and doing this and that, having to internalize, having to put my mind somewhere else in a skillful way. So this was very, very helpful when I was being wheeled into the operation theater because I could recognize my own anxiety or difficulty with this, this situation. And in fact, I could just be with the anxiety of the surgical team as well and connect with them. And the anesthetist who, was, who met me afterwards said that um, they'd been discussing it at the, in the surgery that I'd been very calm and that I'd been calmer than the surgical team itself. <laughs> and I said, that's true because I'd been helping the surgical team to relax, you know? I gave them permission to do their job. I said, enjoy yourself, guys. Have a good time. You know, I trust you to do your job. Have fun. You know, I'm just going to be asleep here. You just take care of it. And I could have met there for them, you know. Have some kindness, connect. We talked about Richmond possibly doing well this year. The head surgeon is a Bulldogs fan. The junior surgeon is Richmond. You know? I told them I barked for Carlton. <laughs> Even though I never I've never watched Carlton play. And there was a friend of mine in WA. <laughs> He's one of the prisoners. He was a Carlton fan, so I, I feel a certain allegiance to him. <laughs> He was somebody who would definitely go around saying relax and sweet and easy. So this is where I've been putting my mind a lot this week. I've felt a lot of contentment, even though I've been in a lot of physical pain. I, I don't think I've needed as much medication as, as I would need if I was more anxious or less at peace and less agitated with myself. I feel a lot of well-being happiness, contentment. So I've been very surprised. But sometimes when, it's, when we're back is to the wall, when we have a difficulty and there isn't any way of running away from this difficulty and we have to apply the teachings, then you really see their benefit. You really see them at, uh, in their full use. So you may not appreciate your car brakes until you really have to slam them on, you know, in a, in a, in a car accident, sudden, sudden experience. You know, then you really appreciate, oh, this is a really well-engineered set of car brakes when it's there for you, when you really need them. So I've always found these teachings to be very, very there for me when I needed it. And it's in the application that I find and I find the greatest value in these things. So it's in the utility. So I um, often say to people, you know, people come over, that was a very nice meditation, Bante. I'll say, well, utility is the highest compliment. You know, how much you use this, when and where you use this. And your own experience is your own wealth. You know, to the degree that you practice and utilize these teachings, you'll know their benefit or not. So I, I don't know if it's fully true, but because I was very relaxed, the anesthetist took a slightly different uh, 
approach overall in my treatment. They told me that they, they didn't quite give me the same GA approach, general anesthetic approach. They gave me something quite different, like epidural with a, a, just enough to knock me out. So that I didn't have a big post recovery. They told me that they would normally put catheters on people and they didn't bother putting catheters on, on me. A few other things because they thought I was pretty relaxed. <laughs> seems that anaesthetists are mostly concerned not about just the pain management but the anxiety of the patient. I don't know, I didn't have a long conversation with him but he was quite pleased and he had been telling me about his approach afterwards. He was a very kind person. He was very willing to connect with his patient. It's very interesting the difference between an anaesthetist and a surgeon. Mm -hmm. surgeon is different. My surgeon kept a distance. He wasn't willing to go there. Anesthesis was connected. Very interesting. How our jobs draw out certain qualities in us or how certain qualities in us draw us towards certain work. So what is it that you give priority to? What is it that you want to grow? I used to work as an engineer in a factory. I developed certain skills, analytical abilities. But it's not an area that I give a lot of attention to anymore. I give a lot more attention to these qualities of the heart. I practice them. And I try to share with you guys about my practice. I don't try to tell you what I don't do. I try to tell you what I do do, when I do it. Not to be braggadocio or something like that, but to be somewhat authentic, I hope. So that you have a feeling that this is real, that this works, and is of benefit. So it's your choice, a bit like that surgeon. Do you go for your own knee operation or not? So stupid is as stupid does, is about the best definition that I've come across of wisdom. Stupid is as stupid does. You can have the finest of degrees and qualifications, certificates, and those things are very useful. I'm not trying to discredit them. I have a PhD, it's been very helpful to me in lots of ways. But stupid is as stupid does. I know plenty of PhDs, including myself, that have made very stupid decisions. Because I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't authentic to my own needs. I was numbing. I was hard on myself. I was critical of myself. I was being perfectionistic. I was being addicted, in my case, especially to work. Addiction to work is uh, numbing. It's a process addiction. But there are different kinds of pleasures. And I hope that you can find pleasure in these feelings like peace, tranquility, calm, and equanimity of mind. Because these are enlightenment factors. And these are very helpful. So if you see these signposts in your mind, you're in the zone. Just as if we went driving up to Sydney, you know, initially we wouldn't see that many signs or hallmarks, milestones, that would say Sydney. But as we got closer and closer to Sydney, you would see more and more of these signposts. So when you see more and more of these signposts of calm, peace, tranquility, equanimity, know that you're experiencing and you're close to what we call enlightenment, which is freedom from suffering. And there's different degrees of freedom from suffering. There's momentary freedom from suffering, and there's a very profound freedom from suffering. And its characteristic will involve a shift in view. So you don't look outside of others for ultimate 
freedom from suffering, you find that it's within yourself. So the problem and the solution exists within your own heart. And when you start to look into the nature of your own heart, when you're willing to know the nature of your own heart, and a lot of that will involve being welcoming and kind and friendly towards very difficult states. States of anger, of greed, and of delusion and ignorance. And when you open your heart to these things, you can learn a lot about them, and they become your teachers. And that is the way out of this suffering. So, um, I'd be very happy for your feedback on today's meditation. I hope you found it calm and peaceful. To any of you who might have found it very drowsy or sleepy, I'm glad that you relaxed. <laughs> it's a compliment to me, thank you. <laughs> so, um, we're live streaming, so I, if you take any question, if you could just keep it short and also it be a question, a thing with a question mark at the end, not an exclamation mark. Oh, I. Sorry, there was one other thing. Um, somebody asked me a question yesterday, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit of thinking around it. I was being asked about um, the current vote that's coming up. And um, I just thought about it. The way I look at it is, is um, why bother? Why bother getting upset about You know, I just, I can't, I can't be bothered about um, trying to... You see, when I, look at the, when I look at this proposal that's on the legislation at the moment, I see it as like, is this harming the people who are involved in society? I don't see it as harmful. Is this going to put uh, permission in place or not? Like, meaning, we said in the second precept we put in place that we shouldn't take things. And I find having a marriage agreement, and I've been involved in a few weddings, as you can imagine, as a monk, I do weddings. <laughs> that I find generally weddings are helpful if, if, the, if, a, if it's a mature agreement between people. I think it puts in place a lot of legal support so that there isn't theft, there isn't, uh, there's boundaries in place, legal boundaries in place, and that's very helpful. And also we, we also have the third precept which is about physical boundaries, sexual boundaries especially, and I find a legal structure around marriage and that is helpful in physical boundaries so people can have can have a legal recourse if somebody is abusive. And it puts in place verbal boundaries. It was interesting, I asked a question yesterday that, uh, I asked us, the, the people had, um, did they find that being married, having a legal marriage, helped them to have verbal boundaries? It was, it was funny, all the women said, not really. <laughs> which I thought was very interesting, but that's information for you boys. <laughs> I don't know, but it was funny. So I, but I, 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 I sort of, maybe I'm naive. I think, I think, I think marriage, marriage contracts help have verbal boundaries, you know. Uh, and um, the fifth precept is on, on delusion and drinking and taking intoxicants. <laughs> So if you want to know how to have a bad marriage, just go down to a divorce court. There's a lot of the mechanics of a bad marriage. You'll hear about it. He, she was hurtful. He, she was a liar. He, she was a thief. He, she was, you know, transgressing physical and verbal boundaries. You know, if we take away this protection from people in society, then I, I don't think it's helpful. So when I said I, I couldn't be bothered, I really couldn't be bothered discriminating against people. It's a lot of hassle and it's a great impoverishment in my life. 
my own willingness and ability to connect with whoever they are, whatever they are. So, as an Irish person, we've experienced discrimination in lots of parts of the world. You know, as blacks, as yellows, as browns, as pinks, as LGBTQs, we experience discrimination, and it's not nice. And rather than carrying on discrimination and passing it on and making it multi-generational or becoming, you know, going from a position of being abused, the victim, to being an abuser, the victor, somewhere else, just because, you know, going from being bullied to be the bullier. I mean, why bother? That's my attitude, like, why bother? It's too, too much hassle. I'd much rather sabai sabai. I'd much rather relax. <laughs> Easy, sweet, you know, if, if for any reason or other, just sheer laziness. Like, I hope you can appreciate this, what uh, one philosopher wrote his book as uh, in praise of idleness. Sometimes there's a smart, a smart lazy, and sometimes there's a really stupid effort. And I, I think we should put our time and our effort into modifying our behaviors in wholesome ways and modifying our behaviors out of unwholesome behaviors and let's not worry too much about the the colors of people you know that's not important it's the the heart that's what's important and the behavior is important and if this proposal on the legislation is leading towards better behavior in society and creates a, a more relaxed, easy and sweet place for a couple of people. I think that's okay in my book. But whatever your decision is, I would really encourage you to vote because it's not okay to have an opinion. As one lawyer once told me in America, he said, in a democracy, it's our privilege to vote. You know. So if you vote yes, or if you vote no, you're performing your democratic duty. If you don't bother to vote, you don't have an opinion. You don't have an opinion, so shut up. <laughs> okay, it might cost you a stamp. Thank you very much. Sorry, did, was there any questions or anything? If people want to. Okay. If you wish, then we'll we can wrap it up. <laughs>